Hello everybody, welcome back to uh, the second episode of my video series uh, involving the upgrade of my uh, router table. So uh, I'm going to walk you through uh, this episode which is going to involve upgrading the insert plate into the table. As you remember from the first episode, I went ahead and converted my plunge router, my my uh, port cable plunge router into a one that I could adjust from the top of the table with this nice handy crank and that worked out really well. I drilled a hole through this phenolic plate I had existing and everything is great and I've used it a few times and I'm re I really love it. Uh, but the other part of my goal for this project on the insert plate was to avoid using these uh, insert collars here that you change out with different bits. Um, be, uh, because of all the screws and the hardware and the time it takes to unscrew all this stuff and the, I, 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 the screws here fall down into the cabinet, into the motor. So one of my goals was to go ahead and update uh, this system to one that doesn't require that, uh, avoids all that. Uh, so what I did was I went out and bought this crate plate here. Um, and this is an insert plate that has these very nice insert rings that just twist out without any hardware and twist lock in place and twist lock out of place. So we're going to go ahead and swap out this plate here with this new one and do the required drilling uh, and machining to it to make it fit into my table. I got this one undrilled. I could have gotten pre-drilled ones, but they end up with extra holes that I don't like. So we're going to... So I removed the screws for the, the old mounting plate, this one. And now I, I'm going to take the new mounting plate here. This is the new Craig mounting plate. And I'm going to figure out uh, where I want this uh, motor to be positioned, uh, you know, in a circumferential way so that I get the optimum access to the controls from the cabinet I have or a new one. So what's important to me is right over here is the speed controller which is right here. I want to have a clear view of that uh, when I'm adjusting the speeds to the, to the router table, to the router. So I'm gonna make sure I want that on front. And the other thing I want is that this uh, strut here, where I'm gonna do my adjustment on the height from, I want that to be on the outside of the router bit center. So and the reason I want that is because the table, sorry, the fence, uh, as the fence approaches the router bit, I don't want this hole blocked by the fence if I'm if I'm routing in close. So if it was this way, like that, and the fence came in, it would cover the hole and I couldn't make the adjustments once I set the fence. So I'm going to make sure that this opening for the height adjustment is on the outside of the router bit center. So with those two things in mind, this to the front and this the outside, I went ahead and placed this on top, the new router plate, and 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 that's going to determine, I put a mark here c circumferentially like this, uh, so that I can figure out where, what the angle is of the plate relative to the motor. So once I make that mark, I'm going to take it off, and I'm going to use this plate now, the router plate, or the, the plate to the router, uh, and I'm going to use these holes uh, to mark here on the plate so that I know where to drill. So flipping the piece over, the plate over, uh, here is the base to the router uh, that is going to be used as my, my template to drill the holes. So and then uh, this uh, uh, insert plate has a nice marking here of the center line. So you can see that it they tell you uh, the equal distance from the center of the the opening here. So uh, what I did was I lined up uh, the plate so that I, I aligned my marks here that I put, like I mentioned to you, uh, for the angle of the of the router to the plate. And I went ahead and positioned uh, the router outside of the router plate equal distance to all of these marks here. So it's a little bit over four like that. And from there, I went ahead and I marked through these holes here, um, these holes here, these mounting holes, uh, where the, the I should drill. 
So um, based on that, this is this is where the holes are going to end up. Just to check. Now you see I'm kind of close to this uh, guide pin uh, threaded insert here. So that's about as close as I want to get to it, uh, considering I'm going to be countersinking the the screw head. So it's I applied some double sided tape to the to the uh, router base, and now I'm going to just flip it over, and I'm going to line these marks I made uh, on the on the insert plate uh, so that they line up and then I'm going to stick this to the insert plate as a drilling guide. Okay, so with the plate securely stuck on, we're going to now drill these holes. I'm going to use a um, 964th drill bit, which is the same exact size as these holes in the plate, uh, to drill from the back side. With the holes drilled in the plate, as you see in countersunk, uh, now I'm going to, just like before, to align, to drill for the, the strut hole, for the adjustment, depth adjustment, I'm gonna put one of these center points in here, okay, and then I'm gonna screw the plate back on again, and, that, and then tap it to make the indentation for the center point of the drill. With the center point now marked on the underside of the plate, we're going to now go ahead and drill it. So I drilled the axis hole for the uh, crank handle. And as you see, I got some tear out, which, I, which was surprising to me, especially when I did it on a backer on a solid piece of plywood. So... I'm gonna to try to smooth that over with a counter, a countersink head uh, and see what I can I can do, but I'm not gonna be able to fix that totally. So here's the plate with the, the holes drilled and now this axis hole for the crank handle. Um, I ended up uh, using some epoxy, I'm gonna repair it. It was pretty bad, so I didn't think that I could clean it up with a countersink uh, cut on the top of it. So I went ahead and I filled in, I had a couple of the big chips left, so I used some super glue. I glued them in and then I'm gonna, I did an epoxy fill on the other side. So when that sets up, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and countersink it and hopefully it'll clean up nicely. All right, so now moving on to uh, the next step with this plate is, uh, here's the old plate right here. And I noticed on this old plate, which I really like these features of these set screws here that uh, allow me to set them and adjust it to be exactly flush with the table. The new plate from Craig doesn't have that, and they go through a different process where they kind of come from the bottom and they use screws into the actual tabletop to set the height, which I, is more difficult because you get, you're working under the table. I didn't like that idea at all. So what I went ahead and did, and did was I decided to do the same thing here as for the new plate. So what I did was I went out and I got some uh, box of these quarter 28 set screws, the same ones here. And I marked, I went around and marked the edges uh, to be uh, the same locations as these set screws. And I basically I measured off of this, this nice square I have and I determined that uh, it was, each hole was two and a half inches in from the edge. Uh, and then I went and marked it accordingly. Uh, and it was a quarter inch in, uh, in, inset in, into the edge as well. So I went around with my marker uh, and I made the marks. Now I'm gonna center punch them and drill them with the correct drill and then tap them. So using my trusty drill gay, uh, chart, I look up a 10, 28, sorry, quarter 28, and I look across and it's a number three drill but uh, 0.213 is decimal equivalent. So we're gonna go ahead, I went ahead and chucked in a number three uh, uh, drill bit here, machinist number three, and we're gonna go ahead and drill it uh, at a max speed of uh, 2200 RPMs.
Okay, with the holes drilled, we're now gonna tap each one uh, with a quarter 28 tap, and it goes in nice and easy. This phenolic material is pretty easy to tap and drill compared to steel. So, um, as you see, it's a nice straight tap. I'm gonna go around and do all of them this way. Okay, and all the set screws are in, and I used a little Loctite on the ones that were kind of loose, um, and I think we're all set. We're just gonna take this off. Now the epoxy is now starting to firm up, so I'm gonna take this off and uh, see if it tears okay. Um, and I'm gonna harden overnight, and then I'll come back and kind of sink it as nice and hard. But for now, we're just gonna... so here is the repair to the to the access hole here uh, uh, with some epoxy on it. I'm just going to hit it with uh, just smooth it off with my oscillating sander 400 grit uh, paper. Just get that to be nice and blended, and then we're going to finish it on the inside with a countersink at a countersink the edge on the drill press. I went ahead and uh, cut a little template out for the plate and I gave it a spray paint just to uh, blend in the colors from the epoxy. I don't want to see that gray. So um, I basically cut an opening bigger than the actual hole. Uh, and you can see now it's uh, drying. So we're gonna let that dry and see how it comes out. And we can always just blend it with a little bit of very fine uh, sanding finishing pad on it. Here's the plate installed back on the table with all the modifications we've done to it. So um, this is uh, very nice for me now to easily adjust the height of the, the plate to make it exactly even with the tabletop uh, by just using these top top mounted Allen set screws here. Um, the either crank works great here, as uh, you can see. It kind of lifts the bit right up and down as, as very accurately wherever I want it to go from above the table. So um, that's a these are big plus features. The repair came out really good on the on the count on the through hole. Uh, the other nice thing that I got was I got this set of full set of retainers or sorry rings uh, call it rings so you can change out um, the different size bits. And what really is nice about this uh, insert is that they just twist out. So you can basically uh, swap them out pretty easily as I change my bits uh, like this. So you just put them in like that and you lock it in like that. Pretty easy. It also comes with a nice guide pin I could use from doing from freehand uh, routing. So uh, it fits uh, it's everything I wanted. So the other important thing is the controls below. Let me show you the, the router motor. Here's underneath the table, and you can see now I got my speed control just where I want it, as best as I can locate it right here. So I can I can see it now and know the speed I'm gonna be at. And, uh, and that's about it, but that's what it looks like. And I hope this is helpful to you. And thanks for watching.